Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another Jesus said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please sit down. Now, I know the quick among you will have spotted that this lovely person is called Kevin, but before he brought the word, I thought it might be worthwhile that you knew a little bit more about him. So Kevin, what brings you here today? So I'm a licensed lay minister in training, and I'm here on placement, which, and it's my last Sunday here, unfortunately. Last Sunday? Well, good, we got you in before you yeah. disappear. <laughs> That's lovely. And um, so where are you normally? So normally I'm at St. Gregory of the Great um, in Horfield, so opposite Monks Park uh, School. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, we hear of how Jesus called his disciples and called others to follow him, and how, in many respects, they made up reasons why they couldn't go right away, right that second. We too, at times, can be like these people, called by God, and yet make up excuses, if it were, which was a little like my own journey of how I got here in some respects. I'll tell you how it all started and how I have now become a trainee licensed lay minister. Well, it all started when I was baptized and confirmed at 13 years old. And as we heard last week from Josh, Jesus too transformed my life, even though I was younger than I am now. And he continues to transform my life. A few years later, Six, in fact. We as a church at St. Gregory's went to, on the St. Albans pilgrimage to celebrate the life of St. Alban. And it is here, in fact, that I heard God calling me and heard Jesus say to me, follow me. So this then led to a conversation with my vicar. Well, First off, I decided to see how it went, as we all do, hoping in some respects it would simply go away. But as I attended church more and served more at St. Gregory's, Jesus' voice became louder, not quieter. And we went to St. Albans the, a year later than we had for a second time, again in the same place of the pilgrimage, Jesus said, follow me. Was it easy to put it, put it to one side for a year? No, I had and continue to attend church every Sunday, except for a few, building my relationship with God and being amongst others, as well as having fun, social events, Having, helping with fairs so that I could see the community and be active in that. At St. Gregory's, we do church a little differently than here at St. Peter's. And sometimes we use the senses to join in worship. We have incense, which yes, smells quite nice, if you ask me, but others, not so much, but also a symbol a symbol that our prayers go up to God. We have sanctuary bells. They set the consecration of the bread and wine. Again, as a symbol to remind us that something big is happening here. Jesus is amongst us. 
And yes, at times it's not been easy to train for licensed lay ministry, but it's definitely worth it. And finally, after four years of study, sometimes stressful whilst managing a demanding job of owning your own company, being fairly ill, training and visiting other churches, including being here on placement with all of you. It is nearly the end of training, but the start of a ministry in which God has called me to. And Jesus has been with me every step of the way, as he has with all of us. It's nearly time to be licensed, nearly time to start what Jesus has called me to do for him, for his people and his world, alongside others, and of course, all of you. The point is this, there shouldn't be any loopholes to go through. We shouldn't judge each other and we shouldn't discourage others, but instead encourage, empower, build each other up and love one another as Jesus loves us. Then we will find something of what we are called to do, to be God's church for God's people. In our reading from Galatians today, we hear that we are called to reflect the fruits of the Spirit, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness. These are all things we can do to share God's love. And we are all called to do his work, regardless of whether, like me, you're training to be a licensed lay minister, a priest, or even if you're the bishop, or simply a member of a congregation. Each and every one of us, here and in the world, are called to love and called to show God's love for each other through the fruits of the Spirit. So let us rejoice that God calls each of us to do his work, that we are guided by the Spirit. Let us rejoice that Christ transforms our life through his calling of us and prepares us for all that we need, whether we are ill, whether we have busy lives. He prepares and gives us everything we need to serve him and his people. Amen.